Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. It is another Monday and it's fantastic to be back with you here on today's Tove and COP USA Radio. It's a great day. We have a full house and the topic is great. We're about to talk about purposes. Every manufacturer, every person who has a creation in mind has a reason for it, has a purpose for it. And God is no different. Even before making man, he says, let us make man in our own image. And I liked what he said, and let them have dominion. So God already defined our purpose. And today, our wonderful mothers are going to be here to help us do justice to this very powerful topic of the day. So as always, Call a friend to call a friend to join us and please, please share our link. I have, well, you know, to I would have you know that the views expressed by us in no way, shape or form are they the collective views of the Church of Pentecost, their own individual views. All of the some are saying other students. We salute you. We love you for all you do. So I have us always with me, First Lady Henrietta Kasi. She is the district first lady for Tennessee District, married to Reverend Benjamin Kasi. She's a mother. She has Jeremiah, Joshua, Jonathan, and Jenna Nicole Kasi. First Lady Henrietta has worked professionally in the accounting field, uh, products of the youth and pension ministry, loves women issues, Sunday school, and the youth. First Lady Henrietta, always a blessing to have you here. You're always welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so happy to be here today. God bless you all. Amen. God bless you too. And off to Hawaii. Aloha. We have first the Dora Berry Med J. Married to Reverend Dr. Berry Med J. They have three awesome kids. Anna, Adipa, and Oye. They are authors, and firstly, he has a background in communication. She and her husband have books titled, again, Nobody Wins, The Chemistry of Love, Things We Do for Love, and also who's taken the fun out of marriage and recently, The Preacher's Foundation. Firstly, Henrietta also works as a skilled trainer for kids with behavioral problems, and they are based in my dream vacation destination. Hawaii. First Lady Harrietta, it's a pleasure to have you back. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Uh, it's a privilege to be here today. God bless you. God bless you. We are blessed to have you with us. And off to UK, we have ourselves, First Lady Ohiniba Deborah. Um, she's married to Reverend Dr. Ben Deborah. She's the First Lady of Fountain Gates, uh, um, uh, PRWC District in London. Uh, First Lady is a mother of twins. She has tw 21 year old twins, uh, Asari and Abaka, and 18 year old Akia as well. She is professionally a social worker. First Lady Ohineba, we are blessed to have you join us. You are welcome. Thank you so much, Auntie Gipsy. And as always, it's a pleasure to be with you tonight. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. And off to Canada. Don't ask me how. But she, Mama Debbie is my next door neighbor. <laughs> Mama Debbie Engman is the wife of Apostle Daniel Engman. He's the area head of North York area in Toronto, Canada. They are former missionaries to Guyana in South America. Mommy professionally is an early childhood educator and also very passionate about, you know, herbal stuff. She has been with the Dominion Herbal College and also has a background in, you know, pre horticulture stuff. Mama has uh, three strong men in her home, a mother of three strong men, and in the kingdom, a mother of any, many, many, many more. Mama Debbie Eggman, it's a blessing to always have you. You are also welcome, Mommy. Thank you very much, and I'm truly blessed to be with you today. Thank you. We are blessed to have you too. It's a blessed day. God bless you. Off to Ghana, taking a long trip. We have Mama Doris Utunyako. And you know, sadly, um, Mama Doris also is dealing with the loss of, you know, her mom. Uh, the Memorial and Burial Service is uh, slated for May 29th. Um, the burning is forecourt of Kwamo Palace. And interestingly, my mom lives in Kwamo, so see how the world rolls. Mama Doris Otunyako also is married to Apostle Lawrence Otunyako. He is the fad dealing with the global, you know, monetary and financial affairs 
of the Church of Pentecost, I wouldn't want to be close at all. That somebody said the 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 small assembly, Church of Pentecost money, it takes us hours. I've been a treasurer before, so I know even that little assembly, it takes us hours upon hours to account for the finances. Somebody said, don't mess with COP money. So that is a hot seed and grace upon grace. And so Apostle Lori Satunyako, and they are blessed with six kids, um, six children, no more kids, three is to three, three men, three women. Our mommy here professionally has been a lecturer at the KT Yukuma State um, University, Technical University now. She has an MBA from the Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology. Mommy loves women conferences and for three consecutive uh, terms, she had held uh, Women on Fire conferences. It's always a blessing to have you join us, Mumodoras. Sorry for your loss again, and welcome back to Today's Women. Thank you for another great opportunity to learn from great women of God. God bless you. God bless you, mommy. God bless you, mommy. And also, I say, mommy, dearest, that's Mrs. Abigail Che. And Mama Abigail also is, you know, dealing with the loss of her sister. We are sorry for your loss, Mama Abigail. And uh, mommy here has been with the Department of Nursing as a faculty uh, member since 2014. But currently, she's the head of Department for Nursing and Midwifery at the Pentecost University. What I love to add to the introduction is on the national level, Dr. Mrs. Che is the president, let us think, of the Ghana College of Nurses and Midwives. Our mommy is married to Apostle Professor Peter Ohini Che. He's retired as a past rector of the Pentecost University and also a past area head of the Church of Pentecost in Winnipeg. They are blessed with five children and four grandchildren. Mama Abigail, we love you. It's a blessing to have you. You're welcome and sorry for the, your loss. Thank you very much. It's always a pleasure to be with all of you. Greetings to everybody. Thank you so much, Marie. Thank you so much. So we have a surprise for our viewers. We won't tell you, but you'll get to know. So stick with us, stick with us. And call a friend and please share our link. It's a very powerful topic we're about to talk about today. It's a topic that I love and I'm sure our mothers love too. We are talking about purpose, purpose, purpose. And my, one of my go-to persons on this topic is, you know, uh, somebody that we all may say is an authority on this topic as well. First, of course, being the creator of all mankind. But this is a very statement and we might be going, I, I'm getting ready to come to you. So... The purpose driven, you know, the book that, you know, we've made so much noise about. The beginning of the book in page 17, um, the author says, the purpose of your life is far greater than your own personal fulfillment, your peace of mind, or even your happiness. And uh, it says that it's far greater than your family, your career, or even your wildest dreams and ambitions. If you want to know why you were placed on this planet, you must begin with God. You were born by his purpose and for his purpose. Now, Mama Abigail, I just want to start with you when we start to talk about the human purpose the human foundation, the human background. Some people say, well, you know, we are from this theory, something banging, 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 and here we are. And so many, so many dimensions of how people think about the human life. But mommy, when you think about purpose, what are your thoughts about that even in relation to humanity? Mama Abigail. Thank you. And we pray that the Holy Spirit himself will direct us, especially in this very important area. Amen. Amen. Purpose is key. It's key to everything that we do. And our creator had a purpose. Mm. That is why he created us. So um, just as you have already said, purpose is something that 
I, I, I think I'll air my French, my little French today. Mm. Like mm. the French will say the raison d'être, mm. the reason mm. for being. being. Mm. Why are you here? Why are you doing what you are doing? Everybody must have a reason for being who he or she is. Mm. But like the fact that we didn't just appear. Mm -hmm. I mean, that Big Bang Theory. I've been on <laughs> Earth for over 60 years. There still hasn't been any bank for bank. me. <laughs> so that, that alone tells me that this bank business is not <laughs> because I think 60 years is quite a long time. So some bank should have happened for something to come out of it for me to see that there is a big bank that can bring out. Something should have come out of a bank. Uh -huh. 60 years for me to see. So I think um, that big bank theory, we all, at least we Christians know that it doesn't work for us. There is a creator. Amen. God yeah. Almighty, the creator of the universe. And when we go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 26, which we have already quoted in the synopsis, God said, let us make man in our own image. Mm -hmm. And Christians, we believe that the us stands for God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Now, Bible tells us that God is spirit. And they who worship him, as worshiping in truth and in, um, in spirit and in truth. Mm -hmm. So, the, and since we haven't seen God in human form, apart from Jesus Christ, and we don't all look like Jesus Christ, <laughs> it means that, I mean, in physical body, mm -hmm. it means that this let us create, refers to the spiritual aspect of God. Mm -hmm. And that is where we come in. Now, if God has decided that God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, the three in one are going to create, they must have a reason for creation. Mm -hmm. And that's the reason. My Bible tells me that for each and every one of us, he knows the plans that he has for us plans for welfare and not for evil, to give us a future and a hope. That is a reason. So that reason, that purpose lies with God mm. for every individual. So as I'm sitting here, the reason why I am, my raison d'etre is from God. Mm -hmm. I am not omniscient enough to know everything but he is omniscient all knowing and because he's all knowing and he created me my purpose lies in him mm -hmm. so i think that this whole business of purpose is lies with our creator but for us to know the reason why we are on this earth we have to tap into him for him to direct us and tell us who we and why we are here so that we follow it to fulfill mm. purpose for us. When we miss that, we are lost. Mm. And we can do all kinds of things and still not feel fulfilled. But we are only fulfilled when we go back to our creator and find out his purpose for creating mm. us. So purpose to me is my reason for being but my reason for being because of my limited humanity, I cannot know it to the end. But God who created me knows it. So I go back to him and then I get that reason and then I move along with him. Without mm. that, we will make a lot of mistakes. Mm. And it also falls on all of us to um, trust him. Mm. Because he, he, he has a bigger picture. Mm -hmm. He has the bigger picture. And if we look at ourselves as human beings, when we create something, um, the person who created the watch mm -hmm. or the clock had something in mind. 
that this clock is to tell us time. Mm -hmm. He didn't create the clock to give us temperature. <laughs> so the clock cannot get up and say that now all of a sudden, now I don't want to be a clock anymore. The internal creation, everything that has been put together is to make the clock tell time. Mm -hmm. So in, in the same way as human beings, if God has created us, he has put everything in us to do what he wants us to do. That is the reason why we do not need to be jealous of other people. We should not try to imitate people. We should not try to um, get into the shoes of others because we think they are doing better than us. Our internal wiring by God is such that it leads us on to our purpose. And that is what we should be looking out for through God to get the right answer and go in the right direction. Mm. Yeah. God bless you so much. Very, very profound going in. Our internal wiring. And you, you, you speaking for us to know we are unique in our own way. So if I'm unique and I'm good as I am, by who made me, why should the blender care about what the knife does? There's no comparison over there. God bless you so much, mommy. Mama Doris, I'm coming to you again. I'm just about to go around and just get everybody's, you know, understanding of how they feel about the term purpose. And Mama Abigail has said so much that even as it, we go along, we just have to look at it even individually. God bless you so much, Mama Abigail. Mama Doris. Okay, thank you so much. So as we've already said, Purpose is the reason why something is made or mm -hmm. created. Mm -hmm. So God himself created us. And I want us to have that mentality that we are not accident. Mm -hmm. God created us for a purpose. And God is the creator of the universe. So I want to support this with two verses that suggest that we are created by God. If you read my favorite, Acts 17 and the, verse 24, he's, it, the Bible says, the God who made the world and everything in it. God made the world and everything in it. Mm -hmm. Which, and everything means everything, including human beings. Mm -hmm. So God created me for a purpose to live on this planet Earth. If you go further, Acts 17, he says that he even allots portions and boundaries for people and where they should stay. Mm -hmm. So that is the pep. That's why you are in America. I'm in Ghana. Mm -hmm. God initiated it. And my favorite, Romans 11, 36, he says, for from him and through him <laughs> and for him mm -hmm. are all things. That's right. Hallelujah. Amen. This is a powerful uh, Bible passage that says that everything that goes on has mm -hmm. a purpose and is for him, God, through him alone. He is the source. And, and what? And for him. Mm -hmm. So I was brought to this planet Earth by my mom and my dad. But the purpose for which I came here is that God has a unique, extraordinary plan for me, a okay. footprint that nobody has it. I mm. am unique. I'm fearfully made. Mm -hmm. I cannot be, even twins, we have differences. Mm -hmm. So you are a, a, something that God himself sat down and planned and brought to you on this planet to fulfill a promise, to fulfill something, a whole, a vacuum, to do something specifically. Mm -hmm. So if you are listening to us and you are like, you, you don't have meaning to life and you are giving up, we are here to tell you that there is a purpose for your life. Amen. Irrespective of what you are going through, irrespective of what people are telling you, God created you for a purpose. You may not see it, but believe you me, the Bible says that in Psalm 57, 2, it says, I cry to God, most high, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. Hallelujah. Amen. So the 
person who created you is the same person who fulfills the purpose of your life. Mm. If you read Psalm 138 verse 8, it says, the Lord will fulfill his purpose. Mm -hmm. So oh, there is a fulfillment of the purpose. He created you for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And he is the one who will uh, orchestrate and be the architect to fulfill the purpose. So then what is it that you have to do? You need to connect to the supernatural being who created you. That's right. Because he created you for a purpose. You may not know the purpose. You may not know how to get to the purpose. You, know, you may not know what, how, and uh, what to do. But the person, the architect who stays up there is ever ready to direct your path. So I want to encourage ourselves, you know, now because of the COVID, people are getting down. So mm. many things are going on. There are losses. Maybe you started a project, your business is going down uh, and you are blaming yourself. You are beating yourself up. Is it, uh, maybe I didn't pray a lot. Maybe I didn't listen to, it's part of the purpose. Mm. And in the purpose, there are some times that you go down and sometimes that you will come up. You go through the valley, you go through the mountains, but all things work together for good for those who love Christ mm -hmm. and those who have been called according to his purpose. Mm -hmm. As I end it, is there any divine connection or supernatural link? Yes, there is. If mm -hmm. you read Proverbs 19, 21, the purpose of the Lord will stand. Hallelujah. Amen. The purpose for the law of the Lord for your life will stand. We have the God who in Psalm 23, he leads. Mm -hmm. He said, he leads me beside the still waters. Mm -hmm. So this God that we are talking about, he leads. Mm. So if you are faulting your way, go back to him. And yeah. he said, he restores my soul. We have a God who restores. Mm -hmm. So if you've had any loss, the God that restores is there to restore you. Don't give Man. up, don't throw in the towel. He's not yet finished with you. He's just, it's just the beginning. And all that you are going through to is like a mold that mm -hmm. you use to build the blocks. You have experiences. So don't give up on yourself. If it is education that you are going through and you are you filled your papers, I'm trusting God that you will come back, learn, go and write. If it is business, start again. Anything, mm -hmm. relationship, go start again. Don't give up. Don't say that because. This one has done this to me. Maybe that is not my purpose. Maybe God doesn't want me to marry. He says, it's not good for a man mm. to live alone. So God wants you to marry. Just mm. that maybe that relationship in which you are is not going the way you should go. Mm. All that we want to say is that once you are on this planet, uh, there is a purpose for you. And mm. the person who architects the, uh, the purpose is Jehovah God, the Adonai. Mm. So if you are missing your way, go back to the drawing board, go back to God. His arms are open and he will receive you and you have fulfillment and joy in life. God bless us all, amen. Amen, amen. God bless you so much. There is perfect love <laughs> and it's a, God wasn't lonely. I, I'm just coming back to what you were saying. I'm reading page 25 of the Purpose Driven you know, book, it says, God wasn't lonely, but he wanted to make you in order to express his love. <laughs> because she said, we are not an accident. If there was no God, we would all be accidents. If there was no God, because she said, is there a divine connection? If there was no God, then we'll all be accidents. Going back to what Mama Abigail said, we just taken two openings and it sounds like... <laughs> A very, very deep sermon already. <laughs> oh, Doris. You will bring bless the you. offering. You will bring the offering. I'll give you to the fact. <laughs> God bless you so much. More Debbie Eggman, I'm just going to come to you. From your personal perspective, I even from Mama Abigo, even from Mama Doris, purpose. I just want to hear what you have to say and I'll move to other aspects of the, the the purpose is muted yeah thank you my mommies mm. uh, you've you've really expounded the topic but i would read from 
one of the scriptures that you gave to us mm. says, Isaiah 43, verse 7. Mm. The ESV said, everyone who is called by my name, mm. whom I created for my glory, Hallelujah. whom I formed mm. and made, mm. everyone, mm. there isn't a single one who wasn't mm. created for the glory of God. So when we talk about purpose, now how I understand purpose, like our mom said, you got to go to the one who formed you and mm. made you for his glory mm. so that you can be able to connect to him and be able to mm. have the fullness of the purpose of your life. Mm. Um, I find like with computer, and some of us like we struggle because there are some things I'm supposed to know about the computer that I don't know. Any time when it's time for uh, this program, I would call Apostle, please come and come and connect the thing. I should have learned it by this time. <laughs> you know, but at the end of the day, I'm asking in connection with purpose. My purpose, if you look at it, to be able to come onto this program is to find out ways to be able to connect so that when the time comes, when I come on and I click the buttons as it has been set up to, <laughs> immediately I will be able to connect in. <laughs> over and over and over again, yeah. I am not fulfilling that purpose. Mm -hmm. Why? Because I feel I have somebody there who is going to be able to do it for me. Mm -hmm. Now the point is, what if the person is not there? Mm -hmm. So God <laughs> expects us as his children, he has created it for his purpose day by day to be able to tap into him, mm. to be able to log into him, so to speak, to be able to find out what is your purpose for me for today? You know, sometimes the thing is that uh, I, I may have heard a, 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 a message somewhere and because of that, I am riding on that message. But mm. meanwhile, maybe for me, that is not God's purpose for me for that day. Mm. So I want to encourage every one of us that because he is the one who formed us mm. and because he's left his spirit with us to guide us, may we connect to him mm. time and time again so that as we do, he will guide us in our purpose and we'll be able to achieve our goals. Many of us are failing our goals for the fact that we are not connected to him in purpose. Mm. When we do, no matter even how small it is, because it is to his glory, when he is glorified, it will fill us with so much satisfaction. Amen. Amen. God bless you so much. You know, that song we sing, our end, the glory of the Lord. And when you think about the glory of God, and if God made us for his glory, then what is our burden? What is our burden? God's glory is beautiful. So God bless you so much. But I was laughing, mommy, when you were talking about, you know, <laughs> Because we have people who do stuff for us, we don't bother. I remember way back, years back, I had a flat on the highway. And that time, Pastor had traveled to Ghana. And to be honest with you, I was just not in a good place because the, the police officer pulls by. So, ma'am, can I help you? I say, yes, sir. Where is your this? Where is your that? I'm thinking, yes, I know my husband told me he has all that. But I, I, I don't know where it is. So I have to call. I'm saying, please, Ghana, don't give me any bad connection because I need help right now. I called him and said, there's something we have to lift and there's something under the... Oh, my goodness. The, the police officer looked at me. He laughed and laughed and laughed because everything was right there in the car. But I had no idea. I'd never done an oil change. I've never filled my own tank. That was a wake up call right there, <laughs> right that moment. So I could just relate to what you were saying, Marie. I could just relate. First Lady Dora, go for it because I see you laughing in your heart, heart at me. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I'm laughing because most of the times we, we leave all these things for, for the men to do it. But yeah. if you're in the military, uh, your military spouse, you learn these things because you know that <laughs> they can be deployed any any time and so it's you know these things are things that uh we don't just leave it for the men to do uh, we, we you know we we learn that it, it's it's good it comes in handy mm -hmm. uh, i believe my mothers have said it uh very well in regards to purpose uh, sometimes even when you buy something from the store 
they will tell you you should return it to the manufacturer mm -hmm. because they made it. And so if there is a problem with it, they can fix it. And, you know, Mama Engman said it right that he's that we, we need to go back to the source mm -hmm. to find our true purpose and, and, and true meaning to life. If he made us, obviously he had a purpose in mind mm -hmm. as to why he made us. And uh, um, the person that comes to my mind is Jeremiah, his mm -hmm. experience. You yeah. know, when you read Jeremiah 1, uh, 5, it says, before I formed thee in the womb, I knew you. Mm. You know, I ordain you as a prophet over the, over the nations. So this tells me that before we even came on earth, God knew what his purpose for us was. And it leads into predestination. Mm. You know, so nothing happens by accident. Mm. You know, uh, when he met uh, Peter and Andrew, he said, follow me mm. and I will make you. You know, so Peter and Andrew found their true meaning when they followed Jesus. So he is a true source to have a fulfilled purpose and a true meaning to life. Amen. Amen. Follow me and I'll make you the maker, the maker. God bless you so much. First lady on Hineba, follow me and I'll make you. Please, what are your thoughts on the divine purpose? Thank you so much um, for the please. We it's muted. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's okay. Thank you. Purpose. I think our moms have said a lot with regards to what our purpose is and how we can identify our purpose. It's already been established that for us to know our purpose, we need to connect with the divine. So there's a divine aspect um, to purpose. We didn't just make ourselves. So definitely the one who made us is the one who would kind of help us identify our purpose in life. Also, what I would want to add, which our mom, one of our mothers has already kind of weighed in, is the fact that Purpose is unique to every individual. So as already mentioned, we shouldn't kind of compare ourselves to others. In this day of um, social media and gadgets everywhere, it's the temptation to kind of do what somebody is doing is great. Because you think, oh, everybody is liking it. Everybody is applauding. Everybody seems to um, kind of fancy that kind of thing. So we are tempted to kind of go on and do what other people are doing, but it's unique to us. God has a particular purpose for us. And listening to Mama Debbie Engman some weeks ago, I wasn't on the program, but listening to her, she made mention of how um, there was a particular time where she had so many things she wanted to do as a minister's wife, mm -hmm. but she went to God in prayer and the Lord told her to just take the membership list. Mm -hmm and just call people on the membership list. Mm -hmm. And the point is, who would know you are calling people? Mm -hmm. Who would give you thumbs up for doing that? Mm -hmm. But then that is what God wanted her to do at that particular time. And mom testified that when she did that which the Lord prompted her, the results were amazing. Mm -hmm. So it's very key that as individuals, we go to God who is our source, mm -hmm. who is our creator, and find out what he wants us to do at any point, particular point in time and do it. It's only in that that we would find fulfillment. So as a, um, if you're an, an unbeliever, you might be um, pursuing a purpose, you might be doing things, um, you might have gotten a name for it, it might be productive in the eyes of the world, mm. but then I just want to encourage you that you have a creator. Mm. You were made by the God Almighty. So as much as you think you are making progress, a day of accountability is coming and very soon when your creator is going to demand from you what you did with the talents that he entrusted into your care. So you might be doing so much, but at the end of the day, when it's time for reckoning, what mm. account are you going to give? Is your creator going to be happy with you? Is he going to say, well done? Or is he going to say, depart from me, you who workers of iniquity? So it's very key that we go to the source. So if you do not know Jesus and you are pursuing a purpose and you think you are making it, go back to the savior, surrender your life to him. 
reconnect back to him because he is your maker. He is your creator. And as you do that, you find real meaning and fulfillment in life. It's very classic in the life of um, Apostle Paul, Saul in the Bible. And Saul, the um, Acts chapter 9, says he was, I mean, brewing threats upon the Christians and the people of the way. He was doing all kinds of things and he was known for it. He was fearful. I mean, he, mm-hmm. he was he was regret for what he was doing, but that wasn't the will of God for him. And it was on one particular occasion when he was doing what he thought he he does best or is good at or meant to be doing, that he met the Lord Jesus on the way. And that was the beginning of his conversion. That was the beginning of the redefining of his purpose, the things that he thought he was meant to do. Upon meeting Jesus, his life changed, and then he went into the will of God for him, and then he was able to do what the master pleases. So it's very key that we connect to the source, give our lives to Jesus, have a relationship, a connection with him, and from that point, mm-hmm. we'll be able to define or identify what purpose he has for us. One of our mothers has also made mention that the fact that this is God's will for you or God's purpose mm-hmm. for you doesn't mean things will be easy throughout. Mm-hmm. In the life of Joseph and David, you come through opposition, even from your own family at times. You might not get the support you need. You might not get the encouragement you need. You might fail at times. I mean, it, it might be very difficult not seeming to go well. But if that is the will of God for you, if that's the purpose of God for you, stay in touch with him. Mm-hmm. Stay with him. Don't go ahead of him. Don't um, lay back. But then the Lord in due time will make his will and plans for you perfect. Thank you. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. First Corinthians chapter 12. And I'm looking at it from <laughs> verse 22. In fact, some parts of the body that seem the weakest and least important are actually the most necessary. 23. And the parts we regard as less honorable are those we clothe with the greatest care. So we carefully protect those parts that should not be seen. I'm looking at this scripture, thinking about it in connection with what you said, that who would know, who will give, give you props, who will give you thumbs up for the things that you do behind the scenes? Who would care that you sent a text to somebody to say, how are you doing? Or that you call to check on anybody. That may seem less important, but we are talking about the divine connection, the source who made us see it all. That's what I was thinking from what you were saying. And I can take it because also you have 20. And if you say we are all unique, definitely you do know what you're talking about. God bless you so much. First thing you hear me at it. We are looking at divinity and human purpose, if you can weigh in as well. Yes, um, our mothers have said it all. And um, just to piggyback on our mother, uh, about what she was saying, when you look at Paul and his life Mm -hmm. and how at one point in time he was convinced that what he was doing was his duty and it was his calling. And it just goes to show that in life, sometimes we may be doing things in our minds and in our hearts, yeah. uh, we think it's really the purpose of God for us. Um, but we have to, as our mothers have all said, it is important for us to find our way back to the source yeah. and find our way back to the one who created us because he alone knows our true purpose. And he is the one alone who can guide us and, uh, and direct us in the path of which he has purpose and destined for us. And it's important for us to realize that, as our mothers have said before, that everyone is unique. Everyone's purpose is different. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, our, my purpose is not the same as my mother's. It's not the same as my grandmother's. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and it's not the same as my sister's. Even though we've shared the same womb, it's not the same. It's completely different. And so when we're able to identify that, we no longer try to f- chase behind other people's purpose. But we instead find our own purpose in life by going to God and allowing him to find and to direct us so that we can find the right path. So it's important for us as individuals to understand that we all have a purpose. No one on this earth is purposeless, but we all have our own individual purpose. And it's important for us to identify those purposes and live life 
in line with such purpose. Mm -hmm. God bless you so much. No one is purposeless, but God is where we go to identify it. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. I'm about to acknowledge our people and Mama Abigail, I'm just about to come to you because she said we have to find our purpose. So um, I, I want us to look at it in, in terms of, do we have multi-purposes? Can one person have, you know, dual purposes or numerous purposes? And if somebody is asking the question, you tell me to go to God and how do I practically find what my purpose is? So Mama Abigail, I'm just about to, acknowledge my people and then i'll come to you so you are with us on today's woman thank you all so much and over and over we have people reaching out to us telling us look you don't hear us you don't see us but we watch you we listen and so thank you all for the encouragement and the support and all of you who share we do appreciate you and you know you can join us on facebook and if you don't have Facebook, our people tell me, look, you don't have Facebook. If you don't have Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube. And every single time we upload, you're able to also watch and do share it. Some of the, oh, I loved it. You did. Let it be a blessing to somebody also. So do share it. And all the Sam, salute to you and all of you, our team members. So I have Auntie Rejoice Salam. And she says, hello, women of God. Hello to you. Auntie Susie Aduma, which she says, Mama Doris Otunyaku, our condolences to you and the family. Looking good as always. Thank you, thank you. Auntie Sandra, which she says, hello, women of God. And Auntie Susie Adubak, she says, women of God, you are looking lovely and blessed. God bless you. Thank you so much. And Auntie Rejoice Salam Sekopo, forgive me if I didn't do the last thing. Right? She says, my deepest condolences to Mama Abigail, Mama Doris. May God come for you both in the hard time. And I see Nana was just up my she says, Good day, mommy. Thank you, thank you for always being here with us. Auntie Julie, I'm going to my job. I just says, Thank God, Monday is here again. Welcome, mommies. More blessings. More blessings to you, too. And <laughs> my husband is here as usual. He says, Bangladesh, 60 years. Thanks, Mama Abigail. Bangladesh, 60 years. <laughs> Thanks, Mama Abigail. <laughs> well, yeah. I just rest my case up to this point. And Mrs. Nanakushi, she says, my heartfelt condolences to you, mommy. Mama Abigail and Mama Doris, may you all be comforted in the Lord. Amen. And Reverend Isaac Damqua, watching from Germany, God will bless you, man of God. And our mommy, Mama Mary Christine, mother-in-law, President Henrietta Christine, my former regional mama is here. Mama Mary, God bless you, God bless you. The prophets in the house. Elder Professor Kwame Ketia. God bless you, Elder. You know the love is deep. And I have my dearest husband. He said, thanks for listening, Doris. We are not accident. This is very uplifting. As always, I have with me Auntie Grace Ajumari from Piyadu. She's always here with us. God bless you. God bless you. And uh, she says that, um, good afternoon, women of God. Good afternoon to you, too. And... Nikina's goal to Alma, she does, you know, bedtime, you know, stories for the kids. She says, when it comes to purpose, two books come to mind. The Power of Purpose by Dr. Mark Murray, so rest in peace. And Purpose Driven Life by Pastor Rick Warren. Absolutely very great reads. And Auntie Sandra says, I, oh, amen. God bless you too, Mama Doris. God bless you too. Auntie Francesca Ampofo, hello, blessed women of God. You all look beautiful. Hello to you. God bless you. And she says, thanks, Mama Doris. We are, we are to go to God for our purpose to be known. And to Julie, I'm praying him at Jabbar. God bless you. God bless you. And my daddy, drumroll is in the house. Apostle Samson of Oriado. And he says, God bless you, our mothers. The supreme purpose for all humanity is that we will seek God and find him. For in him we live, we move and have a being. Apostle God bless you so much. Love to Mama Melissa and everybody. And the scripture, you know, if you will seek me and find me if you seek me with all your heart. When Apostle just said that, that's the scripture that came to mind. God bless you so much, Daddy. We love you. And I see Auntie Monica was still, you know, in the course of the week, she had a birthday. So happy belated birthday to you. She says, praise the Lord, beautiful men of God. Praise the Lord to you too. 
and Dignes Golda Alma, she says, purpose, Romans 8, 30. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified. Those he justified, he also glorified. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And Pastor God, I'm about to address him as such because the way it's going, he says, yeah, Mama Engman, thank God for husband. Don't mean to betray anybody. But it's same here. Hmm. So I don't know who this pastor is talking about. I just have to move on. <laughs> and he says, we are the men who, it feels like Father's Day already. So that is Pastor Gordon Ampofo talking. I don't know what he's talking about. So I'm moving on. And Auntie Sandra also says, aloha, Mama Dora. God bless you all. And Mo Abigail, I'm just back to you. We're looking at, do we have dual purposes, multi-purposes, you know, and if somebody's, you know, asking the question, everybody always says, you know, you need to link to God and all that. How can I practically find my way to my purpose? Mo Abigail. That's a big question. I personally believe that everybody has Mm. but we have different ways of getting to our purpose mm. and we have been created in such a way that God has given us different means fulfilling our purpose so there is a purpose for me that's how I believe it other people believe that you can have different purposes, but I personally believe that it's a purpose. And when we go through the Bible, there are so many places that we come across what God is telling us, the, the, telling us that he has made us for a reason. Mm -hmm. And for that purpose, that is how we move on. Mm -hmm. He says himself, when he read his manifesto, mm -hmm. he came out with what his purpose was. Yeah. And that is what he pursued throughout. Mm -hmm. So he got to the cross and died to save us. So that in the same way, I believe that everybody has one purpose for which we are created, but we go through it in different ways. Now, when you look at um, Ephesians 2 10, which you have already quoted, mm -hmm. we are God's workmanship created in Christ. Workmanship mm -hmm. created in Christ. He says to do good work, mm -hmm. which God prepared in advance as our way of life. As our way of life. So God has prepared us to fulfill a particular purpose. But he has put several things in us. And through those things, we come up with whatever. Purpose. So for instance, whatever my purpose is, I am a nurse. And through my nursing career, I do certain things differently from someone who is an accountant. Mm. That accountant also has a purpose for being on earth. And so you see that person moving in through so many ways into that particular direction. I look at um, some of the, the big names that we have around, somebody like um, John Wesley. Mm -hmm. What was his purpose in life? You look at Billy Graham. What was his purpose in life? But ultimately you realize that through different ways, Mm -hmm. Each of them came up to be what they did. And there is one thing that you can say about them, that this man was an evangelist of the kind, and he just paved the way and brought people to Christ. This one went in this particular way to set up the Methodist church, and this is how he went about it. So um, I, 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 I look at the song by Charles, the hymn by Charles Wesley, which says, a charge to keep I have. Everybody has been given a charge. 
Mm. Now, how we find that cat, how we are sure that we are on the right path, doing whatever it takes, um, we naturally move towards our purpose, naturally. Everybody naturally moves towards his or her purpose. Mm. Wow. And you see it in the things that we are talented with. So you start working in that particular area and you move towards your purpose. Okay. A lot of people want um, God to come and stand in front of them and say <laughs> that, okay, Abigail, <laughs> this is your purpose. <laughs> you have to put this book on top of the other book and then um, pass it this way and then it will go in that direction and then you will know that you are supposed to be writing books in this particular area. That is how a lot of people look at it. But because we are naturally wired towards our purpose, mm. all we need to do is trust God. Trust God that God is leading me on the right path. Mm. The moment we put our trust in him and we are willing to obey him, mm. there is no way we are going to make a mistake. So um, I have come across a lot of people who claim they don't know the reason why they are on this earth. They have no purpose. But you sit down, you look at their lives, and you know, you can tell that this is the direction the person is moving. These are the talents in the person. These are the things that he's, you, you can easily identify with. Mm -hmm. But just because we are not looking at what we are doing, and we are not in tune with God, that is why we think that we have missed our purpose. Of course, sometimes being human and because we are limited in our um, views, sometimes you get confused. Sometimes you are not sure whether you are doing the right thing. But so long as, so long as you have the good intention of pleasing God, even if you 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 cheer your way and you go in a <laughs> <laughs> if you go, you, you turn aside a bit and go in whichever direction. Mm -hmm. He says that I will instruct you and teach you the way you should go. Hallelujah. That's what he has said in his word. So he will instruct you and he will teach you the way. So, so long as you are willing to be obedient to him, mm -hmm. he tells you. Um, of late, when, when you see, when you go through challenges and and especially when you lose a very dear person, you sit down and you look back and you are wondering what went wrong? What could I have done? What didn't I do, right? And then you start looking at all those things. But what the Holy Spirit keeps bringing to my mind is you are not here to... You, 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 it's like I'm not, I have not been put on this earth to a meaningless life. Mm -hmm. mm. And the meaning is in Christ. So, so long as I cling on to him, so I wake up every morning and I'm like, God, what is the meaning of today? Mm. What, is, what, what do you want me to do? A day at a time. Mm. Trusting him, clinging on to him. You realize that he gives you the peace and then he leads you along the way. Amen. Even Amen. in the midst of your deep hurt, in the midst of your deep sorrows, in the midst of what, everything that you are going through, when you feel very alone, that is the time that you have to cling on to him. And then because he said he will not leave us as orphans, but he will leave the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit with us. The Holy Spirit actually comes in to take your hand and lead your hand. So the, the finding your, your purpose in God, in, uh, in life, is finding God. Mm. That is my definition, finding God. Mm. So when I'm lost, when I don't know where, which way to go, I, I just, God, where, I mean, what should I do? Mm. I was just mm. listening to uh, Tyler Perry yesterday when I was doing some work as an assignment, and then I banged into him, and he said, he, he has, he, he looks at the light God has put in him. Mm. That God has put light in everybody. And it's like, 
we have a candle in us. So you light the candle. Now, when you light the candle and you're looking for something, you will only see the area around you in the dark. You will only see the area around you. The candle is not bright enough to give you the fluorescent light. Mm. So you will not be able to see, but so long as you have the candle and you are holding it, except at a time, except at a time, you are not going to miss your way. Mm. You are not going to fall into a pit because that little candle, but you see, God has the, 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 the bigger picture. He has the bigger light, the fluorescent light that shows everything. But he has decided to give you the little candle to move a step at a time. It's by trusting him that mm -hmm. he leads you. So knowing your purpose is trusting God. Mm -hmm. That no matter what it is, God, you have said in your word that you, you have good plans for me. Mm. So whatever those plans are, I am trusting you. A step at a time, you will take me through. So some of us may never see the big picture at this time. Mm. Later on in life, when you are about to get to your maker, you look back and then you see that, oh, this is how the picture was like. But then at this time, all we need to do is to trust him. A step at a time. Mm. Amen. 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 A step at a time, and he will take us there. I'm in the book of God bless you so much, Mama Abigail. I'm in the book of look because she has said it. And I'm looking at what Jesus was saying, and I'll go to Exodus to look at something, and I'll come to you, President, and read it. So in the book of Look 18, Jesus was speaking. Mommy said he had his manifesto, and he said 16. Then you come to 18, he said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recover your sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. I'm looking at, he has anointed me. He made me to preach. He sent me and then to proclaim. I'm back to the book of um, Exodus chapter 31. And I'm looking at verse one downwards and I have the New King James Version of the Bible. It says, then the Lord spoke to Moses saying, see, I have called by name, Bezalel, the son of Uri, the son of Ur, of the tribe of Judah. And I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom, in understanding, in knowledge, and in all manner of workmanship to design artistic works, to work in gold, in silver, in jewel, for setting in carving wood and to work in all my workmanship. And I have appointed with him. So I'm looking at the spiritual things we do, uh, the ministration, the preaching. And I'm also looking at the secular things we do. I'm coming to you, first lady Henrietta. Uh, you mentioned in the past how you got to do the profession that you did. If you could speak to us for the people that are wondering, Look, one minute, everybody says, oh, I want you to be a doctor because, yes, the doctors make the big bang. But then you're feeling otherwise. If you can weigh in, can we have multi-purposes? And how do I find my purpose? Jesus said he was sent to proclaim, to preach. But then God says, look, I've put something in this person. And he's doing what we'll call secular jobs. That's really him with it. Yes, um, I think uh, our mother Abigail touched on it, and it's very important that, you know, naturally um, you have certain things in you that are building you up for your purpose. Mm. Um, and sometimes our eyes are closed to those things because we have certain ambitions. Mm -hmm. um, we look around and we have certain goals. Okay, well, this is, this looks more favorable or this looks more attractive. So instead of us paying attention to those natural abilities within us, we're looking at something that may or may not um, belong to us. Um, and so naturally, when you identify the natural things within you, mm. then you're able to 
actually grow more into your purpose. Um, because for me, I always see things as like a building block. Life is about building yourself. Every day you're building yourself, you're building your character, you're building who you are as a believer by the choices that you make and by the things that you do. And mm -hmm. it's no different when it comes to your purpose, you're building yourself. So when you're, when you're walking um, in line with your purpose and you're, you're, you are accepting your purpose, um, and, and, and accepting what God has called you to do. And as you grow in it, because you've identified it, then at that time, you're able to, in fact, be in line with your purpose and not be distracted by the things around you or be distracted by the influences around us. Um, I think it's important, even when you look at it professionally, you know, growing up, you see that there were certain career paths that were, that were more favorable. Um, but, and, but however, when I tried it, I, I mean, I failed um, badly because it wasn't for me. That wasn't me. That wasn't what God had had for me. Um, and so, when we as individuals are able to accept who we are and able to accept how God has created us, because like we said, we are all unique. Um, we all have our own path. And when we're able to embrace it, accept it, and walk in line with it, then we're able to walk in line into our purpose. And we build ourselves gradually um, into who God has um, purpose or ordained us to be. So it's about accepting who you are and accepting how God created you, accepting what God has created for you to do um, mm -hmm. and, and appreciating it um, and appreciating those around us. You, you, you see, because I think, I mean, even in scripture, when you read, everyone has its function. Um, every book, part of the body has its function. Something that comes across as insignificant is very, very honorable. So, um, you know, accepting who you are, accepting what you, what role you play and respecting your, your purpose, as well as respecting the purposes around you, it helps you identify who you are in Christ. And it helps allow what God has purposed and ordained for you to be, to come to pass to his glory. God bless you so much. Acceptance, acceptance, acceptance. First lady Henrietta, God bless you. And you know, our viewers, feel free to post your questions, your experiences in the chat room, because I've seen Professor Elder Professor Department KK says, praise them. Can someone's purpose be revealed to another person? How can an unbeliever discover their purpose? So if you have any questions, if you have any comments, let's have it. So there's a question out of the moment that we am just about to come to you. The process, can someone's purpose be revealed to another person? How can an unbeliever discover their purpose? There, I'm thinking Elisha, Elijah, some conversation just came to my mind about that. Mama Debbie, if you can even ask you, weighing on, do we, how do we discover practicalities? And also, you know, now the question is, can, if say, I don't know, can it be revealed to somebody else? Mm -hmm. They said out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, mm -hmm. the truth is established. Mm -hmm. You know, so if somebody comes to me and tells me, you know, I sense that the purpose for your life is to marry Brother Kweku. Hey. You know, and <laughs> he says, this is what the Lord told me. You've got to do it. You know, I, I have to take my time and pray. Because at the end of the day, if I go into this marriage and there is a problem, you know, it's going to be, oh, you know, somebody advised me to. Meanwhile, God is there, the all-knowing, the all-sufficient. My fullness, my purpose is in him. And he knows everything. Mm. In my little walk with him, I have learned to know that there is nothing mm. hidden from him. Mm. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse, verse, um, here it goes, verse 9. And it says, but it is written, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the things which God has prepared for those who love him. Hallelujah. Mm. Love him. So at the end of the day, you know, there may be somebody who may advise you that I see that this direction is going to be a problem. I remember there was one great man of God many years ago in ministry here, we came and one day we were giving him a ride going somewhere. And then all of a sudden he just spoke and told my husband, he said, you know what, never leave. 
hey, I was sitting in the back of the car and here, nosing me always, you know, and I'm thinking, what is Papa saying? He said, it doesn't matter what you go through. It doesn't matter the battles and there will be battles. It doesn't matter the issues and there will be issues. Papa started listing things one. He said, never leave. Stay mm. in there for the Lord has plans. Mm. You know, so when things really got tough, and honestly, I would say he is the only one who came out and spoke this kind of revelation. And so when the battle started coming, <laughs> you know, everyone would say, Papa said, <laughs> it does <laughs> <laughs> there are times you you know the battles are so fierce mm. you ask God, God why left right left right and center what is going on and then we remember Papa said they will come mm. but when they come don't leave so we will stick our foot in there I will go sometimes we'll go into the church you know alone sometimes late night and then we will cry we could pray at home, but we felt, no, let us go out of, you know, somewhere special. And then we'll go and pray and cry to the Lord. And then the strength will come mm. for us to be able to continue with the purpose. And the purpose at the end of the day, I, I look at it, especially in ministry. I see that in ministry, mainly it is just to give God glory. Mm. If God puts you in a place no matter how small, you give him glory there, he chooses to decide what he wants to do. So as we walk in our purpose, like our mom said, the purpose is one. Sometimes as we are growing older, there are different things that come along our way, hurdles. Like I'm a young child, so I'm carefree, but then I have to study. Then when I'm studying and I'm doing very well, I will be able to move on to university. When I move on to university, I'm able to get a good job in future. Mm. I'm able to prepare. I'm able to marry. Mm. And all those are different stages of life. When mm. I marry, then I'm now I'm looking forward to having my children, another people, and to guide them so that they would also be fruitful. Then from then on, I'm starting to move on into old age. And then how I prepare, I was speaking to a lady not too long ago, and you were saying that, you know, just a few years left for retirement. What is the planning purpose that you have? So that when you retire, I will not say, oh, you know, I needed this and I'm not able to do this. How am I able to guide my purpose according to God's plan and purpose he has given unto me to learn to save so that the dresses that I see today mm -hmm. that I, 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 even now I can't even use, I won't be tempted to spend that money to go there, but I will be able to use that money to save. So mm -hmm. that when the time comes, the direction God gave me, I have followed. And the blessings and the peace of mind I have, I will have it until he calls me home. Mm -hmm. So that is the area where when we depend on him, no matter the stages of life and the issues that come our way, he will guide us. He said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Uh, somebody who has served the Lord faithfully, and even his children begging for bread. Mm. Why? Mm. Because God also grants us wisdom mm. so that along the way, we'll be able to also plan in guidance according to his way. So that when that time comes, the fruitfulness will be so much and we'll bless the Lord for allowing us to be able to be guided by his purpose to accomplish whatever he wants us to do. Amen. 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 The righteous is never forsaken. I always love that scripture. God bless you so much. Mama Doris, I'm coming to you as well. Even as you're asking the question, can somebody identify somebody's purpose? I'm in the book of Exodus chapter 2, verse 2. The woman became pregnant and gave birth to a son. She saw, so it's the woman seeing, she saw that he was a special baby. That's what they amplify. The New Living Translation says special baby. Let's see what they amplify it. Especially beautiful and healthy and kept him hidden for three months. She saw 
that he was a special baby. So whereas all other mothers couldn't see, some mothers saw something. And I'm cross-referencing that with the scenario with Samuel. The mother says, God, give me a son. And if you give me this son, I will give him back to you all the days of his life. Purpose. How are we defining those purposes? More doors. Okay, thank you so much. I, I want to talk about the variety of purposes mm -hmm. and then I will uh, weigh into mothers identifying the purposes or directing the purposes for their children. Yes, if you read, I think Psalm 92, mm. it said the righteous shall flourish like a palm tree. Mm -hmm. So as righteous people, we are likened to the palm tree. And what is it about the palm tree that we are likened to? It has a lot of benefits. Mm. If I ask the panelists to mention the things that we can get from the palm tree, you can notice that we we'll get uh, uh, Auntie Akira, what are we getting? Ben Kwai will get <laughs> palm nuts. That's what we say, palm wine. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want you to lose. So you see, it's also <laughs> as a righteous person or as a Christian, you need to be beneficial in so many ways to mm. the people around you, especially different ages. Mm. And at any stage in life, you need to be very, very beneficial. As Jesus Christ, when he came, he was a friend to other people, to the disciples, he was a teacher, to Martha and Mary, a friend, to us, a savior. So we have so many purposes that we need to fulfill as Christians on this planet Earth, wherever you find yourself. As Asofuma means, we should be there for our congregations, our congregation as mothers, as um, uh, Jotebe, the mother of Moses, recognized. She, she had given birth to Miriam and um, um, I think Aaron. 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 Mm -hmm. But when she gave birth to this one, she saw the difference. And she kept this lad and Moses became the kinsman redeemer for the people of Israel. That even God noticed that Moses was different. So as mothers, we can identify, you, you, I have six kids and they are not the same. I have three um, ladies, let me put that, they are not, no more kids, three <laughs> ladies. And they are, they are different, they are not the same. So you, as a mother, you need to identify their purposes by the things they do, by the talents that they, they have by the, the, the way they show it, they portray it and guide them so that the purpose of God for their lives will be manifest, uh, manifested. For example, I have one of them, which when she was growing, anytime somebody gets hurt, she would just run and go for uh, uh, iodine, come and dress. She wasn't afraid of black. Whilst others will be running away. So we started calling her Mami Ness, you know, and she said she was going to be a nurse. Along the line, when she was growing, she found herself into cookery. And this girl can cook. If you leave her, she will cook the whole day. <laughs> then when she completed um, SS, and we were looking for her, forward for her to get into the university and do the nursing. Then she said, no, she doesn't want to do the nursing again. All of a sudden, I want to just go to a vocational school and, and, and do my catering. And she will beg for you to know that she can bake. <laughs> so you see that she's a multi-talented person. But you can see that she loves the nursing, especially the midwifery. And when we are going and somebody is praying, say, oh, me, I can, I can aid this woman to give birth to. Then I'll ask her, how can you do that without the knowledge? Mm. So I spoke to her. I took her to Auntie Abby. We spoke to her. Now she's doing her midwifery. Mm. And she's baking. Every weekend she will come home. She will come. Mommy, I learned this on YouTube. When you add this to this one, you see. So... Now we are guiding her and we are talking to her that she should just, this one comes because it's a talent that God has inbuilt in her. The inner person is helping her to do that. But for this one, there is time and there is a season 
mm. where you have to learn. When the mm. time is no more, you cannot learn. So why don't you finish with this one? Then this one, which is a free gift from God, you can continue. So mm. as mothers or as parents, we, we should guide our children so that they will, they, will, they will fulfill the mandate that God has given them. So I think when Mary had the angel salutation and all those that you give birth to this one, and she, she didn't understand it. So she ran to Elizabeth, who is a matured person, a mm. spirit for a prophetess of God, and mm. she confirmed it. So mothers should, should be like prophetess to their kids. Mm. Hannah knew she wanted a child for herself. Mm. She went to the temple. Even high priest Eli couldn't uh, uh, distract her attention. She mm. spoke to the creator and the provider of children. And she had it. And she made a, a, a promise that I'm going to um, bring this chap up so that he will be useful. That is a purposeful thing that Hannah did. Mm -hmm. And as parents, when we see that our children have the talent, we shouldn't discourage them because we think that he, he, the person is not, ah, what is your son doing? He's singing. On the school school, and no one ought to. Michael Thompson made it. <laughs> you see? <laughs> and, and, and because the person is not going to be a doctor or <laughs> those things that we think um, is a prestigious thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, oh, just no 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 can play the keyboard, the guitar. <laughs> if your son or your daughter is the, the whole world, the lead, uh, whatever, mm -hmm. would you be happy? Yeah. So we should guide them. We shouldn't discourage them. Sometimes uh, my, my younger brother, the one who comes after me, he could play football, but my father would not never let him. Then he would say that, <laughs> now look at this footballers, the money that they are quoting. <laughs> If he had played, all my worries would have been. <laughs> <laughs> so all that I'm saying is that parents, we are there to guide, not to discourage them. Mm. Guide them, let them do the right thing. Let them find purpose in mm -hmm. all that God has given them. Mm -hmm. And I know that when we do that with prayer, seeking mm. the face of God, it will be war well with them and it will be war well with us. May God bless us all. Amen. 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 God bless you so much. I'm going to come to you. <laughs> I was just laughing because so many thoughts are coming to my mind. I will acknowledge my people and then I'll come to first the Dora. But you know, when you were saying guidance, I remember that my mom said, even as a kid, I will bombard you with questions and questions and questions. It's like we have a journalist here, inquisitive uh -huh. mind. And, you know, I, I, when we got out of school that, that time, there was a strike. So that was the time that everybody had to wait one whole year. So as you're waiting for where you really wanted to go, we didn't want to. I, I had a friend. We didn't want to stay at home. So we, every form, we bought it. Like, <laughs> you know, the, you buy this, you buy that. Now, I remember when, you know, we'll go and check. I don't want to mention exactly where it was, but I was there and I saw my headmistress of my former school. And I just went to say, hello, mommy. And she said, what are you doing here? I said, I bought the phone. She said, I'm going to tell them they shouldn't even admit you. You are in the wrong place. I said, oh, <laughs> she, she made that form a waste. And when I told my mom, she said, well, I told you, but you know, at that time, we were just doubling into so many things. And that woman said, look, I'm just going inside to say they should drop you. You are here in the wrong place. And I'm sure so many people can testify that sometimes it's obvious that this is not for you. But sometimes mm -hmm. we just push and push and push. So God bless you for saying mothers have to guide. And I work knowledge people. And I, I want to also hear practically your experiences about how you ended up with your profession or how even as parents we are guiding our children. So God bless you so much for that. I see so many comments. Uh, okay. I see Linda Yadam. She says, Amen. That's one of my favorite verses. God bless you, mommy, Debbie. God bless you all, women of God. Amen. God bless you too. Auntie Audrey Amponsa, she says, a woman in the church finds a purpose 
and it's so big in relation to a divine calling. But in, in COP, women cannot go beyond a certain level. And therefore, she feels that her gifts are being subdued or curtailed. What should she do? That question always pops up. So let me table it down. And I have big sis Benedicta Bookman and James sis Gabriel. She says, praise the Lord, beautiful family. Praise God to you too. I want you to know the views expressed, our own personal views, in no way, shape, or form, are they the collective view of the Church of Henry. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. This is Nana Kushia, she says, very funny, but true Momo drawers. Deaconess Nana Arthur, senior, she says, Momo we go, Nyami Shropa. Until Linda Yadam, she said, oh, Momo Kushia, you are right. And I see Auntie Helen Bruni, Enjoying the vacation with the family, greetings to everything. I think also very Dr. Ben Deborah is here came to support Mama Hineba and all of us. He says, life's meaning is in Christ. God bless you, our dear man. Amen. Amen. God bless you too. And he says, now that she says, submitting totally to God's will. So that question, I'm just going to uh, table it down. We'll come back to it later. We'll let our big mothers handle it for us. First lady on here, but you have twins. I'll come to you first lady, Dora, as well. You have twins. And we are talking about peppers and we are talking about how we gravitate. If you can weigh in as well, even as mothers, what you saw and what you were doing when it comes to the guidance. Thank you so much once again, Auntie. And um, I've got twins and um, two handsome young men and um, totally different in character and mannerism, everything. Um, I won't go into it, otherwise I'll get into trouble. <laughs> but you realize that their, their interests are completely different. Mm. I remember when they were growing up, um, Pastor used to tell them, you don't need to compete with each other mm. because the tendency for one person to do well in one thing uh -huh. and the other not doing well is there. Mm. But then realize that you are brothers. Mm. We think one of them will become a pastor. That's the, I mean, maybe God's will will be done. And we think one will be a parliamentarian or um, somewhere in government. Mm -hmm. So what he's constantly told them is, wherever you are, use your gifting and the resources available to you to help mm -hmm. your brother, mm. instead of being in competition with one another. Because you realize that when it comes to A-levels, O-levels, as soon as the results come, everybody's like, oh, how did this one go? How did this one do? Thank God, when they finished uni, they both had the same grade. So there was no need to compare. No one did better than the other. But there's always that tension and that pressure on one of them or the other as to how they're going to turn out. So as a mother, as a mother, it's, it's key. And as parents, it's key that we identify God's will concerning our children. Obviously, Mama Doris has already said that we shouldn't kind of take them in the direction that we think will bring money or will bring us fame. But what is God's will for them? And God's will is identified in so many ways practically. What are they naturally predisposed to? What are their interests? I mean, what can they easily do without um, somebody pushing and pushing and pushing and pushing them? Mm. I mean, you look at how Mama um, Gifty hosts this program. And if you tell me to do it, I'll need a lot of tutoring and a lot of work. And um, I think that that time Pastor told Mama Gifty that look, when Ohiniba is coming on um, today's woman, everybody has to drop everything. Her lighting has to be checked by somebody. Her, her, I mean, the, the chair, the, the, the color, I mean, everything has to be, I mean, people need to come in to help her do what she needs to do because you realize that it's, it's not naturally me it's not naturally me by god's grace I'm, I'm 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 making um the impact that i can but it's not naturally me but as a mother i'm praying that god will grant us grace not to focus on material things but mm. to i mean push our children in the will of god concerning them advise them and help them to achieve what god wants them um, to achieve and not what we as parents or the community that they live in want them to do. So that is the first thing. 
And also, um, when you look at um, Moses' mother, mm. classic example, the king has even is issued a decree that all male children should be thrown into the Nile. And this woman looks at the boy's face, looks at his forehead, looks at, I mean, and he realizes that this is not a baby for the Nile. Mm. This is not a baby for the crocodiles. Mm. This is not a baby whose life should be wasted. Mm. And when you go to Hebrew, say by faith, they were not afraid of the king's decree. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm praying that all mothers will do. Regardless of what doctors are telling us about our children, regardless of what teachers are saying, your child is dyslexic, your child is this. And sometimes we come home and we weep, we come home and we accept it as the order of the day. Elizabeth in Luke chapter one, when the neighbors came to name the baby as Zachariah, because that was the name of the father. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure the neighbors were thinking, this man has gone down. I mean, he's not achieved God's full purpose for him. So let's give the name to this young man. Then maybe he would end up achieving what the dad couldn't do. Elizabeth said no. Elizabeth said no. And as mothers, that is what we need to do. What has God said concerning our children? Mm -hmm. And what is the world teachers and doctors telling us about our children let's turn on the word of God and say no no this is not my child this is not a portion of my child and and I found God I mean when my children were growing up one of them at some point the teacher said he was three years behind um his his class he was three years in, in terms of intelligence three years behind his class and they were given all sorts of names they were I mean go for these lessons go for speech and language therapy and do and at some point I was tired and I said, for how long will this go on? No, this is not my child. This is not my mm. child. If this child really came from my room, then no, it's not him. And through prayer, through encouragement, I bless God for the life of this young man. At some point, the teachers who were saying he's three years behind his class, they were saying that he's two years ahead of the people that he's with. Because I chose to say no. Because prophetically, I knew that this child has a purpose in life. God is taking him somewhere. And with all those labels that they are putting on him, he cannot achieve what God wants him to do. So uh, as mothers, as parents, let, 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 let's have faith in God. Because first of all, let's know what the will of God is. Let's be close to God. Because if you are not close to God, we will judge wrongly. We would put things on our children, which mm -hmm. are not them. But if we are in touch with God, God will lead us to kind of, I mean, fashion our children's lives and advise them to where they should go. Esther and Mordecai. Mm. Esther and Mordecai. Esther thought she was in the palace. It's well with her. Mm. And Mordecai had to remind her that, look, for all you know, it was for a time like this. Don't think you are exempt. Don't think the Jews will be done away with. And because you are in the palace, that's it. It took a godly cousin, a godly uncle, to tell him that, look, sit up. And Esther rose up and said, if I perish, I perish. Mm. And that is when she came to her senses. So the input of um, parents, the input of godly men, godly women, men mm. of God, women of God, sisters who are in Christ in individuals' lives is very key. Let's just not accept the labels that are being put on them, which are negative and are not in the will of God. Let's turn for what God has said. He said it will be the head and not the tail, above and not beneath. Mm. It doesn't mean it will come easy. But nothing comes easy in life. Let's speak mm. to God and we'll get to our destination. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you so much. First day, Jora, if you can weigh in as well, we're looking at personal, you know, experiences of how we're able to arrive at, uh, you know, where we are right now. And also, even as a parent, what you see, we are looking at practically how we are guiding our children to their purposes. And if you think about your personal life, if you want to share something with us, firstly, you All right, thank you so much. I believe Mama Ohineba said it very, very well um, with the examples that she even gave. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I want to say um, to this is that God's purpose for our lives is not just an event. It is a continuum and a summation of our entire life. And so personally, I don't believe that there is just one purpose. I believe that I have lived in five different cities. And in all the cities I lived, uh, I have lived, God had a purpose for me in those cities. 
uh, you can have various roles that God's divine purpose is attached to those roles. You can be a minister's wife. You can be a career woman. You can be a mother. But all these roles that you play, God's purpose is attached to them. So I, I, I know even the question that somebody asked about the Church of Pentecost and the way, you know, we don't, we don't ordain women as ministers. Now, I would have a problem if I say that I only have one purpose. And God's purpose for my life is that I was born to be a minister. Then obviously I'm in the wrong church. But if I understand that, I have so many purposes that God has deposited into my life. So even as a minister's wife, there is a purpose. There is a connection. There is something that God is looking at for me to establish. And if I fail, it does not mean that his purpose has failed. He will raise somebody to do it. You know, when you look at Saul and David, I mean, God, God had a purpose for Saul to accomplish. Mm. Saul failed. While he failed, God raised David. Mm. So as for the purposes of God, it would definitely be established. So even as a parent, you may fail as a parent mm. in, in guiding your children to their purpose. Mm -hmm. God will bring somebody to help those children for them to accomplish that purpose. Now it's up to them to be humble enough to accept it. You know, somebody was asking that, um, um, I think the question was, can my purpose be revealed to somebody or, or mm -hmm, something mm -hmm. along those lines? Yes. You yes. know, yes. I believe our purposes are all interconnected. Mm. We all need each other. David did not know he was a king until he met Samuel, you know? And so, yes, maybe for you, Auntie Gift, this is God's purpose for your life. But for this purpose to be established, um, National Head had to allow himself to come up with COP Radio. Now, Elder, um, Elder Sam had to pioneer this vision. We had to accept to be here today for all this to come to pass. Mm -hmm. So if we all don't play our roles, mm -hmm. well, maybe this thing will not be, it will not happen here. Mm -hmm. But God will definitely raise somebody to, you know, to accomplish that. And when we understand that we have all these roles that we are playing and understand that every role that I am playing, God's divine purpose is in it. They will not be looking at it like it's a one way um, traffic. Mm -hmm. And so that when you are called as a minister, you will not just say that, oh, my purpose is in life is that I have to be a Church of Pentecost minister or a lighthouse minister. And so I neglect my, my, my spouse, I neglect my children because I'm just fulfilling my purpose. I'm a minister. No. Yes, God's purpose is that you be a minister. His mm. purpose for you also is that you marry your wife and marry well. His mm. purpose for you also is that you will raise godly children that he has given you. Mm. So we can have very, we can have various um, purposes. And there is something I want to read here because um, there was another question about an unbeliever. How do they um, get to know what their purpose in life is? Mm. Purposes has not just been given to Christians. It's for everybody. We all have purposes, you know, but when you add Christ, when you go to the source, that is when you have a fulfilled purpose. Otherwise, you achieve so many things in life, but your soul will never find that true meaning. Uh, there is a book that is written by Dr. Grace Asantibia, you know, mm -hmm. first lady of Church of Pentecost in UK. It's mm -hmm. called um, Can God Interrupt Your Life? Yeah. Yes. Very wonderful book that I would uh, highly recommend. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read something she says here that oftentimes, I'm reading from page 29. Mm -hmm. Oftentimes, the unveiling of the graces and abilities deposited in us by God to mm -hmm. aid us in our calling downs on us with internal stirrings, often exhibited as either great enjoyment derived in doing something or great discomfort and upset as seeing something done not quite to the standard of our internal compass. It, it may present as a yearning to provide something such as a service mm. that is currently absent so that the life of other people around you are made better by it. When you are moved repeatedly by what you see done in a substandard way around you, you want to get it done better. You ought to pay attention to the trend of events mm. because inherent in that discomfort is okay. a key to assignment in life. Mm. So sometimes, you know, you have these yearnings to do something, pay attention to those things. And what, what I even love is that she said, 
for every assignment, mm -hmm. for every assignment, there is provision made. That's God right. has already made a provision. That is why even for people that are not Christians, you can have somebody own about 14 companies. One person, I'm the CEO of this company, CEO of that company. He, they, they understand that all these purposes God has given them to me, I have to uh, be available uh, and understand that all these things are deposited in me and not just look at it from, from just one angle. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I think that, you know, our time is fast spent, but we might have to come back and define roles and purposes. I'm hearing roles. I'm hearing purposes. So God bless you. Mama Abigail, I see you nodding. I think that there is a synonymous and interchangeable connotation here of our roles and our purposes. But ultimately, I love what you said, the satisfaction and the yearnings and, and the attention that, you know, is, is keep drawing. I'm in the book of Psalm 37 again, 20 23 says, the Lord directs the steps. This is the New Living Translation of the godly. He delights in every detail of their lives. God bless you so much. And I think I like the practicality of it. We will definitely, going into this conversation is just a conversation that we would have to come back to it. Mama, we go before I would go around and take, you know, closings. If you can also uh, weigh in on what the, the question was about the Church of Pentecost and about women, you know, these questions come up over and over and over again. And I just going into this topic would have been so surprised if this question didn't come up in one form or the other. Mama Miguel, if you want to react to that and we'll take hold this is a conversation that definitely we won't be able to exhaust today. Mary said, let it be unto me according to what the Lord wants it to be. Mm -hmm. I think most of the time we, we have challenges with, uh, like you said, the rules and the purpose. I, I said at the beginning that I personally believe that everybody has one purpose. When Mama Kusia was talking about her daughter um, being a cook and at the same time going into midwifery, what I see as her purpose is help. Mm. She's a helper. But she does so many other things to come on to that, fulfilling that one person of help. She can do it through cooking, she can do it through midwifery, she can do it through nursing. And so eventually, at the end of the day, you realize that she feels fulfilled when she has helped people. Mm. Mm. That is her purpose in life. Mm. I mean, I'm, this is, I, I don't want it to be an argument. That is how I see it. Mm. Everybody is entitled to their opinion. But that is how I see that there is one thing that you are working towards. But Nemkrabata Dawson. Mm have so many branches that lead on to it. So ultimately, normally when you see somebody, there are so many multi-purpose people. They are doing this, they are doing that. I mean, let's look at a very classic example from what Mama Dora was talking about is our own um, brother, Elder Ejapon Sion of Zoom Lion Field. Mm. He, can, he can just sit down and design a business. And he has this and he has that. And, he, and if you don't take care, you think, I want this man so scattered all over the place. But ultimately, there is one purpose that he's fulfilling, creating work for others. Mm. But he's doing it through different areas to come to that level. Mm. So in the same way with us women, we, a lot, a, women especially are multi-talented. Mm. I mean, if you look at the way we are able to carry our babies at the back, be pregnant at the same time, be cooking, cleaning, <laughs> sleeping, going under beds and clearing, clearing things, mm -hmm. you realize that we, we are really multi um, faceted. Mm -hmm. And most of the time, we are also um, we are also able to think strategically all at once at the same time. Men naturally will want to finish one piece before they move on to another one. Mm -hmm. They want to, this to be accomplished. After that, then they move on to. But women can be standing in the kitchen, listening to the phone, 
looking after her child who is out there playing at this, and we are just all over the place. So in the same way in the church, we have a lot of women and in our church, I realized that the women's population is higher than the, is, yeah, bigger than that, that of the men. But we follow the apostolic ministry where Jesus used men for certain positions, for certain positions. <laughs> and based on that, the church has its way of explaining why women are not ordained. The fact that women are not ordained does not mean that women do not do ministry. Mm. We still do ministry. I mean, if we come to this argument about should women be ordained or not, I have my views. And I'm sure everybody on this platform will have different views. Mm. But mm. that is not what, are you fulfilling your ministry? What ministry has God given you? And are you fulfilling it? Some women are prophetesses. Some women are preachers. Some women are singers. Nobody is stopping them from doing their ministry. If it's wearing the cassock that makes us think that we can then be ministers of God, then I think we will say that not many churches are using women appropriately. But then the ministry that has been given to you, so long as you know the ministry that you have, and you continue doing that in the church, I believe that you are contributing to what God has asked you to do. You are doing it, but in, in the church that you are following the rules of the church, you are doing your ministry at the same time. So I personally do not see it as um, uh, <laughs> being suffocated because if you go into the history of the church, women have played a very big role Mm. I mean, the, the kind of things, why do we have the women's ministry as it is? And we are still struggling with the men's ministry. The reason why- <laughs> Mommy, the, did you I, say I, it right here? I said, that, <laughs> I said that it's my view. I said that <laughs> without any apologies. Why, 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 what, what happened? It's because of what the women in the beginning put into the church. Mm. And, and I, I remember reading one of the historic backgrounds of um, Pastor Makion. They said mm -hmm. that when they went out and they were um, praying for baptism of the Holy Spirit, the men were standing there, the women were falling down with the, the gifts of the Holy Spirit left and right. And when the gifts of the Holy Spirit are, is working, you, what will you do? You can't stop them. They will still go on and do. And women have contributed to so if there's anybody in the church who is sitting there saying that Yatina uh, Breso, nobody has, uh, is sitting on your, your destiny. Get up and do what God is telling you to do. Let the Holy Spirit direct you. And the thing about every, every ministry, whether it's for a man or a woman, is humility. Humility that makes our ministry move on. So whatever God has given you, so long as you are willing humbly go under the direction of the Holy Spirit, you'll be able to use it to the glory of God. Amen. Nobody can Amen. stop the work of God. Nobody, mm. no human being, no demon can stop the work of God. So, so long as you humble yourself under the mighty hand of God and allow the Holy Spirit to lead you, I think the women, we are shining and will continue to shine. I love the fact that I'm a, a, a woman in the Church of Pentecost mm. and God is using me in his own way, through different ways, to reach places where the men cannot reach, to glorify his name. Amen. Amen. I think this calls for cron cron. Holiness. Yeah, right, <laughs> the, we, we are vibrant. And I, and I love what Mami said. Nobody can stop the work of God. Nothing about gender, nothing about anything can stop. God bless you so much. God bless you so much. Auntie Quinnie Stefani, she says, great point, Mama Dora. God's purpose will surely come to pass with or without a particular person. Purposes are interconnected. Never thought about it this way. Very, very great. Very, very great. And Prof Kwame Ketia, he says, Mama Abby, now 
The ministry in the church is apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor. Apart from these ministries, most people think that there is no ministry. Thanks for the deep explanation. Thank you, Pa. Prophet, no, no. <laughs> and then my, my dear sister said, women and ministry it has been a contentious debate, even in the field of theology in the form of the egalitarian and complementary arguments of women's roles. However, no matter what, whether in the church or not, every woman's purpose will be fulfilled in Christ. Amen. Amen. I see Mr. Oh, wow. Mr. Azime Azina. Not sure if I did the name right. Is it? I don't know you in person, but God knows you. God ministers to me. Oh, wow. Interesting. A whole long thing. God bless you for being here with us. So I think this is a personal thing that he's saying. So we'll, we'll move on. And then uh, Deaconess Nana Arthur says, God bless you, Mama Doris, and all our mothers. God bless you. And Auntie Sandra also says, great contributions. First Lady Dora. And Auntie Audrey was saying that, are we saying that roles and gifts are the same as purpose? Does purpose suggest that there is one path? So there's a question, does the purpose suggest that there is one path? We would, you know, delve into that. And then Professor Kwame can say, Rabbi, take me deep. So our time is fast spent and we want to, you know, uh, start to wrap up for today. We're going to definitely come back out when the next week, there's no way we can do the, this topic and do it just in this one setting. So I'm going to go around and take brief, brief um, closings and then we'll have a surprise uh, coming up. So First Lady Henrietta, please, uh, we'll take your closing and uh, we'll go around and take brief closes and when it's getting so good I look at the time and I'm like my goodness it doesn't even feel that this is how long we've been here but apparently the clock says otherwise. First Lady Henrietta it's been great in here for today what do you want yeah. our people to take with them? God bless you. God bless our mothers for the wonderful contributions um, for what we've learned today. I just want everyone to understand that we all have a purpose. Mm. Um, no one is excluded. We all individually have our purposes uh, in life and it is important for us to um, to go to the source the, our creator mm -hmm. in all things and not use our own thoughts or our own um, the things that we see to determine what our purpose is but in fact allow God himself to direct us to our purpose and I know um, we will talk a little bit more on um, some hindrances and hurdles we face in purposes, but I'll just stop there and just encourage us all to know that we all have our purpose and don't let anyone tell you you don't have a purpose. Um, God created you in a purpose. And so let us embrace that. Let us understand that and let us find our individual purposes, appreciate it and allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen. 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 We all have purposes, unique and individual this is so much first lady dora will take your closing as well all right thank you so much it's been awesome and i've really enjoyed uh, myself on this program just want to close by reading something from uh the book and god interrupt your life uh chapter mm -hmm. five uh page 103 uh, she quoted a verse second peter one verse three to four that his divine power has granted to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us to his own glory mm. and excellence. Um, Dr. Grace goes on to say, in other words, the provision has already been made mm. for whatever my life's assignment is. Mm -hmm. That provision becomes immediately access accessible to me when I come to the Lord, repenting and turning away from my sinful nature. So all the graces that I need to fulfill uh, whatever uh, purpose God has given me, mm. he's already provided it. Now, if you've lost your way, it is time to come back to him because mm. he's a true source 
of revealing your purposes on life to you. Amen. 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 The true source. God bless you so much, First Lady Dora. First Lady Ohineba, if you could give us your closing as well. Very short and sweet, First Lady Dora. God bless you. First Lady Ohineba. Thank you so much, and God bless all our mothers. Um, I'd like to conclude by saying that there is a divine element to purpose mm. for us as Christians, and also there is a human responsibility as well. So God has fashioned our lives in such a way that we, I mean, fulfill his will and his purpose. He knows what he wants us to do. And we need to connect to him to identify it. On the other hand, we can mar the purpose of God for us by the steps that we take. Mm. So there is a human responsibility in achieving our God-given purpose as well. You can't be lazy and lack self-control and not want to do anything when God has revealed to you what he wants to do. And at the end of the day, expect to achieve it on a silver platter. You have work to do. So identify what God wants you to do and run with it. Mm. There are obstacles. There might be obstacles. Even Herod threatened to kill Jesus at his bed at some point. But the divine purpose of God will always stand. Mm. So yes, purpose, there is a divine element, but there's also a human responsibility. So let us run with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Let's run with it. Let's run with it. God bless you so much. Mama Debbie, we take your closing as well. It's been wonderful here today. It has been very wonderful. And I would conclude by saying thank you so very much for learning once again today. Every purpose of human has a connection mm -hmm. with his creator. So living a purposeful life means bringing awareness to every, every moment making conscious choices and having the acceptance of God. God's mm. purpose for keeping me in this life is to reflect him and to win souls for his kingdom. So mm. may God help us that those who know him, we will push forward in this wise. Those who don't know him, we will also encourage and live lives that will draw them mm. to come to that saving grace so that their purposes also will be fulfilled. Amen. Amen. Fulfilled purposes in Christ. God bless you so much, Mama Debbie. Mama Doris, please will take your closing as well. I see Mama Teresa Fianculabi is on. She says, thank you, thank you. God bless you too. And Vikina Penny says, God richly bless you all in mercy, our wonderful mothers. God bless you too. Auntie Nana, I miss that. She says, thank you. Thank you too. Mama Doris, Please, your closing. Okay. So thank God for a very successful discussion. I know it will go a long way to help our viewers. But if anybody is watching and his, the person is, I mean, doesn't know what to do, this is the antidote. It's in Psalm 121. It says, I will lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. So you have a maker who is up there, ready to listen to you, ready to help you. The Bible says the spirit of God goes through and through looking for somebody to back with, with his strength. Mm. There is strength awaiting us when we run to the maker and he will fulfill everything that he has said concerning us. Don't be afraid. Don't give up yet. Don't throw in the towel. God is a faithful God and he will do what he has said he will do in his due time. God bless us all. Amen. Amen. Another short and sweet. God bless you. The faithfulness of God, he will do what he has said he would do. Thank you so much. God bless you, Momo Doris. Momo Abigail, please will take your closing as well. Yes, yeah, so I'll just add on to what Doris just said about the faithfulness of God. Mm -hmm. And this, very, this book on the purpose-driven mm -hmm. life mm -hmm. by Rick Warren is a must-read for anybody who wants to 
know more about Pepo. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma <laughs> it's, it's a great book. It has been of very good help to me in the mm. past and continues. This is one of my reference books that mm -hmm. I read. God really used the man to um, talk about his purpose. Mm -hmm. And I just want to read from page 111. Mm. Focus on who God is, his unchanging nature. Mm. Focus on who God is. Okay. Our God is faithful. He is steadfast. He is unchanging. Mm. And here he says, regardless of circumstances and how you feel, regardless of how others make you feel or how you think about things or how you look at the world around you, sometimes the enemy has a way of making us worry about unnecessary things. Regardless of all those, hang on to God's unchanging character. Mm -hmm. Hang on to God's unchanging character. Remind yourself what you know to be eternally true about God. He is a good God. He loves you and he is with you. He knows what you are going through. He cares and he has a good plan for your life. And one, the last sentence there is, is saying that never doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. Mm -hmm. Never doubt in the dark what God told you in the light. So we don't know who we are ministering to this evening, but whatever you are going through, we have an unchanging God. He doesn't change. He's steadfast. He's reliable. He's trustworthy. And he has a plan for you. He has a purpose for your life. So cling on to this God and trust him. And you will fulfill his purpose for you. And you will enjoy the rest of your life. Amen. 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 What a fantastic episode. What a powerful closing. God bless you so much, Mama Abigail. Isaiah 46, 10, NIV. I make known the end from the beginning, from ancient times, what is still to come. I say, my purpose will stand, and I will do all that I please. The creator, the creator, the creator. God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Um, we have a wonderful celebration, and also uh, Mama, Mrs. Margaret Ofori, uh, Mama uh, for Ohio, Regional First Lady for Ohio, She's going to be um, standing in the gap. Uh, this is the wake up call program that is on uh, COP USA radio. And she's going to be on the, it's going to be Wednesday, 10 p.m. Eastern time, 7 p.m. Central time and 2 a.m. GMT. So it's going to be powerful this Wednesday. Mama Margaret is going to be on this. So you're all invited to join. But we have a birthday. We have a birthday, um, Saturday was First Lady Henrietta's birthday. So even as we are closing, we want to uh, celebrate First Lady Henrietta and wish her happy, happy birthday. There is a joke I had outside that said, don't show somebody where you buy your bread. Because when you show her where you buy your bread, she will take the bread, take the flour, take the nutmeg, Take the baking soda need, and at the end of the water. day, kill the fire with water. <laughs> there is a joke like that. But there are some people, they are genuine, they are loyal, and they are truly a blessing. First Lady Harrietta, happy, happy birthday. The love has thank always you, been. Thank you, thank <laughs> you. We want to ask our mothers to help us sing happy birthday for some and Reverend Benjamin could see was planning something. Happy birthday Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. May God bless you now.
May God bless you now. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. May God bless you now. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I'm so grateful for you all. I really appreciate it. Where are the invisible people behind the balloon? You guys come. Come say hi to Grandma Abby. Come. Say hi. 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 Hi everyone. God bless you all. God bless you all. This is beautiful. I really appreciate it. May God bless you. You guys have made my birthday so wonderful. May God richly, richly bless you. God bless you. We love you. We love you. Enjoy your day. I love you all as well. Thank you so much. Thank you too. Mama Abigo, please pray for the topic and also pray for First Lady Henrietta for us, please. Shall we pray? Our Father, we thank you so much for another good day and thank you for your word to us. Thank you that you continue to open our understanding to what you have for us. Mm -hmm. Father, we are praying that today, if any of us has a problem with identifying whatever purpose for which you created us, Lord, open our understanding. Let the Holy Spirit illuminate our mind for us to understand what you have in, in store for us. Whatever your plans are for us, however you go around it, Lord, that is yours. You are sovereign. But Lord, let us know that we are in your will to fulfill whatever purpose that you have for us and lead us to fulfill it to your glory and to your honor. We pray and commit your daughter and writer into your hands that, Lord, you will bless her. Even as you have added a year to her life, continue to bless her and use her. Use her to reach out to other people to know your saving knowledge. We are praying that through everything that we have discussed, Lord, your Holy Spirit tonight will reveal himself to us and give us a clearer understanding of everything. Yes, Lord, Lord, we are praying. If there's anybody out there crying, yes. weeping, thinking that you have forgotten him or her, please meet that person at his or her point of need and reveal yourself to the person to be who you have created him or her to be. In Jesus' name have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. 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 God bless you all. God bless you all. Thank you so much. It's been a very powerful and very loaded episode that, you know, we just have to go back and reflect. We want to appreciate all of you. First lady, enjoy your birthday once again. God bless you. God bless you. Thank and I want you. to God thank you, First Lady Amen. Dora. Thank you, First Lady Ohineba. Mama Doris, God bless you. Mama Debbie, God bless you. Mama Abigail, God bless you. Elder Sam, God bless you. All our team members and all of you who are with us, God bless you. We have so many people out here wishing you happy birthday. Uh, my husband said happy birthday or first lady Henrietta, not happy highway in my first post. <laughs> and then uh, Auntie Francisca Apo said happy glorious birthday, first lady Henrietta. May God continue to richly bless you, you with more wisdom and yeah. beauty. Nicholas Monica Wilson says, happy birthday, queen. And the prof, you know, he's also April born. So he's being biased over there. He says that April bonds are special. The man Jesus died and resurrected, glorious. That we can take sure. away from him. So you guys are <laughs> special. And I see Sandra who said, happy blessed birthday, first lady Henrietta. And uh, Reverend Thank Dr. You. Ben Deborah says, happy birthday, Mama Henrietta. And Auntie Rejoice Thank says, happy you. birthday, Mama Henrietta. Auntie Nana and Mr. says, happy birthday, first lady Henrietta. So Deaconess Gold Armour says, happy birthday, woman of God. Auntie Mercy Dunquest, she says, happy birthday, beautiful woman of God. 
And so Linda Yadam says, happy birthday to you, Mama Henrietta. Oh, wow. Mama Susie Adam, so, so many birthday, birthday wishes. Nikina Satsafeni also has hers there. So happy birthday to you. And Pastor Benjamin, God bless you, Pastor Kusi, for working behind the scenes and getting this all together for us. We appreciate you too. Thank you all. Mummies, God bless you. Please you. enjoy your evening. We love you. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. God bless you Bye. all. God bless you too. Bye.